What's up guys, Ryan here from Inspire Marketing. Now today we are going to take a look at the DJI Mavic Pro and the best settings to use for that true cinematic look. Let's roll the intro. Retailing at around a thousand pounds, the DJI Mavic Pro is now more accessible to everyone around the world, consumers and also small business owners. So more and more people are now buying drones. Okay, legislation is likely to change, which will make it a lot harder for people to fly, but that's a little bit further down the line. So we keep getting asked what are the best settings to use on the Mavic Pro. Obviously when you take it out of the box, everything is a little bit all over the place, so it's very difficult to get that true smooth cinematic look and feel with your footage. So we're just gonna jump straight in now to the screen recording. We're gonna go over the DJI Go app and I'm gonna run through some of my favorite settings that I use, whether I'm shooting on holiday for a travel video or if I'm shooting for a client. Okay, so what you want to do once you've connected your Mavic, your phone and your controller is click Start Flight. And then as you can see, it will bring up your aircraft status to begin with. So we're just going to um, get rid of that. Obviously, I've got a low battery warning, but that doesn't matter because we're not going to be flying. And I don't have an SD card at the moment, so that's not a massive issue. So up the top, what you'll do is uh, you can see you've got your ISO information, your shutter information, EV and your white balance, and then followed by your SD card um, and how much is left. And you've also got your autofocus and manual focus settings as well. So what we want to do is ensure that we've got it in video mode so I've just switched it to photo as you can see the shutter button has gone white so you want to make sure you're in video and it will display um, a red button so just below there you can go into your settings so first of all we are going to go to the camera icon up the top now the first one you'll see is video size so if we go into there now you can film on the DJI for God's sake. So what you can do is shoot from 720p up until 4K. Um, you have 4096 by 216 so that is your cinema um, quality footage and then the one below that is your Ultra HD. Now I always have it in Ultra HD as it will fit on all 16 to 9 monitors and it also gives you more options for frame rates as well. As you can see I can select between 24 frame rates which again is the cinema standard or 25 frame rates. Not a massive difference but that's because we have a different setting on the app which we'll go over in a moment so if you can control your drone in a nice smooth way and we will be changing some settings to help you do that I always select 24 frames the next is video format so I always shoot in MOV just simply because I edit on a Mac and this format was created by Mac. If you are editing and doing all of your post production on a PC um, like using Adobe for example you do want to select MP4 but like I said I always use MOV. Next you've got NTSC slash PAL now this is quite important and it depends on where you are in the world so if you are in America you want to have NTSC selected however if you are in Europe like I am you want to ensure that you have PAL selected. So if we go back a screen we now go into the white balance so with the right white balance uh, as a general rule of thumb you want to ensure that the colors actually match what you are seeing so obviously if it's sunny outside you select sunny if it's cloudy it's cloudy 
and so on and so forth. I would never use auto just because DJI isn't very fantastic with recommending settings, so I would always select um, a sunny or cloudy setting. Again, uh, very dependent on the weather. Most of the time in the UK here I select cloudy because we never really have any sun. There's probably about three days in a year where I can select that. So if we go back now and we go into style, so this is where um, things get a little bit more interesting. So you'll see three icons left to right. You've got the sharpness, contrast and then saturation. Now for a cinematic look with your footage, you want to be using the following. So if you head down to custom, you want the sharpness to be at minus two. With the contrast, I use minus two and with the saturation I use minus two. In terms of sharpness if you do find that the uh, shot is looking a little bit blurry of course in post you can add a little bit of um, sharpness there to kind of make it a little bit more crisp but I wouldn't let DJI determine these options for you as I said I would go in and change to minus two, minus two and minus two. Now we go on to the colour selection. So, as you can see, we've got D Cine like, D Log, Normal, True Colour, Art, Film, and so on and so forth. There's quite a few in there. I always shoot in D Cine like, so it gives your image a nice flat look. And then in post, you can add, um, you know, all of your colour grading. Uh, if you're using a LUT, for example. It just gives you a lot more flexibility uh, in post-production to do what you like with the image um, rather than it looking, you know, completely unrealistic. So if we head back there, we've done all of these settings under the camera icon and we want to head over to settings. So these are the ones I've already got set up. So you always want the histogram selected as you can see up towards the top left so basically what the histogram will do is it will always ensure um, that your shot is correctly exposed so you're not overexposed or underexposed the worst thing you can do is be out on a shoot come back start looking through the footage that you've done and the sky is completely washed out or all of your shadows are just completely dark and it's not going to be salvageable in post so I would would always make sure you've got that histogram selected and you really want all of your um, bars to be quite central and it will give you a lot more flexibility then to play around with it. Your front LEDs auto turn off I always select to on. It's not really going to make a massive difference but if you're filming reflective surfaces like I do most of the time, so properties and real estate, um, you just want to make sure that when you hit that record button your LEDs come off so that you're not seeing um, these bright lights in the windows and doors of properties. And now it's telling me I've got low battery anyway. So that's pretty much it. Lock gimbal when capture. It's not really relevant. And again, enable AFC mode. Again, not really relevant. Now, if we go further down towards the grid option, you'll see, see you've got none grid lines, grid and diagonals. Now, the grid and diagonals is probably just unnecessary really so I always select grid lines now that will help to one ensure that the horizon is level in your shot you don't want to come back start looking at your footage and realize that everything is wonky and also number two it will help um, with the kind of rule of thirds when shooting as well so um, I'm not going to go into that because I presume you all know um, about that anyway again center points it's really kind of up to you guys as you can see See it's changing at the moment as I go through them all. I don't really have any on because it's just not necessary. However, if you are using the point of interest on the drone and you know you want that kind of nice smooth uh, movement, sometimes when lining it up to have a center point would be pretty good. So there are all your settings selected here. If we come over to the aperture section here, you'll see I've already got it set on manual. 
but it will be defaulted to auto. Now as you can see, um, it has brightened it up a little bit, but it's selected the ISO to 800 as you can see there. Now you wouldn't really want to go over 800 under any circumstance. The higher the ISO, the grainier and noisy the footage is going to be. So if we head back into there, always select manual because again DJI haven't quite got this right yet with their auto select and what they recommend for you to use. As a rule of thumb you want to keep your ISO to as low as you possibly can. Again like I said to minimise that noise and grain in your footage. I have a set of Polar Pro filters, I'll put a link down in the description to them. They are incredible, they will obviously help keep that ISO to as low as you possibly can. But like I said, never go and shoot in auto, always shoot in manual. Now the final tip that I want to go over is to change your gimbal settings. Massively important because when you take your Mavic out of the box and you go and uh, do your first shoot, the gimbal just moves way too fast. So to do this you want to go up to the three little dots in the top right corner, then you want to select your gimbal settings down here. Then what you want to do is go into advanced settings and you'll see you've got your gimbal pitch speed, enable upwards gimbal tilt limit to 30 degree, gimbal pitch smoothness and enable synchronized gimbal pan flow. Now your gimbal speed, if I just try and move the Mavic um, a little bit so we've got some um, light, actually what I'm going to do, I know I said not to do this but I'm going to change it to, um, I'm just going to change it to auto for now. Uh, just so you can see because it's obviously pretty pretty dark room so if we go back into the gimbal settings it's usually at the highest it can possibly be and this is quite low at around five as the default settings so if we come out of here as you can see it moves very fast and it also comes to an abrupt stop now obviously that's not fantastic when recording so what you want to do is in your gimbal settings you want to bring your gimbal pitch speed down to around 10 we'll check what that's like so as you can see it's a lot smoother but again it comes to an abrupt stop which really isn't going to give you that cinematic look so you want to change the gimbal pitch smoothness you want to move that to around about 20 very hard to do very fiddly so once you've got it to 20 if I now move the gimbal you'll see when I release my finger it will come to a nice smooth stop rather than a horrible abrupt stop so they're the best settings to use we're going to jump in now and I'm going to show you some footage that was taken um, on a holiday in Ibiza some really really nice shots of the island so let's jump into it and have a look 